If you haven't started a podcast yet and only thinking about it, then today's show is for you. If you've already started a podcast but want to level up, then today's show is definitely for you. Stay tuned for for some amazing golden nuggets from our guest, Anna Parker Naples. She is a Get Visible speaker, coach, and audio expert who helps leaders get louder by amplifying their message through the power of podcasts. Don't go away. We will be right back. If you're just joining us, then welcome to the Writer's Corner live show. I'm your host, Bridgette Lindbander from Cape Town in South Africa. Our stream today is made possible by StreamYard, Creative Edge, and BeLive Media, helping business owners make live videos. A special warm welcome to you, our viewers. If you're watching us on Amazon, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, or on LinkedIn, just know that this is an audience-centric show. We are monitoring the comments, so please feel free to introduce yourself, chat amongst each other, say hi. Um, If you say that you are new in the comments, we'd be happy to give you a shout-out to welcome you to the show. Before we introduce our amazing guest, one of the things that we can do to take charge of our story is to embrace live video by going live on camera. But to do that, we do need a few things, such as um, a camera, you need a great chair to sit on. I'm very big on having a chair that is functional and that supports your spine because I live with chronic pain. Um, You also need streaming software and earphones. So if you're watching us over on Amazon, all those things that can help you um, set up for a great live stream are in the carousel. Um, And we'll talk a little bit about the book by Anna Parker Naples that is also in the carousel if you are watching us over on Amazon. But before we bring Anna onto the show, I want to first introduce my co-host and friend Mary Elizabeth Jackson. She's a special needs and disabilities advocate and the award-winning author of the Poolicious children's book series. Mary, welcome to the show. Whoops. Okay, how are you? I'm very well in yourself. I am so um, happy to be here today and excited. And now I'm a number one Amazon best-selling author too. We can both add that to our little resumes and so very exciting isn't it it is all very exciting and talk about um being in the top number one Uh, i'm so excited to have our guest today because you know a lot of people are struggling with the pandemic um they've suffered from the unintended consequences of covid and are struggling to run their businesses and so i'm really 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 excited to bring anna on because she's got a solution for those who are uh, struggling to amplify their voice. I think that's um, great because we need to. Um, and there are so many people who want to. You know, I was thinking about this earlier, how podcasting is now becoming um, inundated with so many people that are trying to get into this, that it's almost like um, the acting field or the writing field. You know, the competition is getting more and more. So I really can't wait to hear what she has to say Hi, Darshan. Um, Can't wait to hear what she has to say for those of us who want to know. I've got a girlfriend who's been like for years, she's wanted to start a podcast and like she has the website, she has the name, but she just can't bring herself to step out into that spot, even though I know she would be totally amazing. So I can't wait to hear what Anna has to say. Absolutely, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know Anna and has never met her before, she's a best-selling author of podcast with impact and get visible Um, and both those books are in the carousel if you're watching us over on amazon 
Anna is a speaker, a coach, and an audio expert. So she's just the right person to, to get the, the knowledge from. She helps leaders get louder by amplifying their message through the power of podcasts. And her own show, Entrepreneurs Get Visible, is amongst the top 1% of all broad podcasts globally. That That's is amazing. massive. That, that is massive. Yes. Yes. Um, and and I must, she does perhaps have an unfair advantage, but that's why we want to get the nuggets from her. She's got a background as a multi award winning audio producer and voice actor. So she knows what she's doing. Her credentials are legit, as we say, right? It's so. totally legit. And yes. and why I'm excited to talk to her is because I relate to her on this level. She went from being disabled to fully recovered at the top of a field um, on the red carpets in Hollywood. And um, and she will help us wrap our heads around the mindset as well. Because, you know, being successful in the podcasting space, a lot of it is also mindset. So yes. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's just get her onto the show, shall yeah, we? Yeah, I know, because we could talk about this forever. <laughs> we, we can. Let's just get her onto the show and get all those golden nuggets from her right now. Anna, yes. say, welcome there to the show. Is. It is so great to have you join us. Thank you for We're very me. honored to have you here. So, oh, it's we're, such a lovely welcome. Thank we're you, not ladies. worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, for my joining. goodness. Anna, firstly, a huge, huge, huge congratulations on this amazing book, Podcast with Impact How to Start and Launch Your Podcast properly i love the way that you've themed it because i mean everybody can start a podcast but doing uh -huh. it the right way um is what sets you apart and so with that um you know you've probably heard us you know in the introduction a lot of people have suffered from the unintended consequences of COVID, and so it's you know if your business has failed a lot of businesses have failed during COVID. um you know i know long-standing businesses that's been running for 30 40 50 years and they folded and so now you've got those people and we fall into this pity party trap um you know that leads to paralysis and inaction tell us a little bit about your journey because you got the news one day that you're going to be in a wheelchair tell us a bit about your story i was told it was about 11 and a half years ago now that and I was heavily pregnant with my third child I was told as a complication in pregnancy to expect that I'd never walk again uh, I had two very young children one had just started school so we had to get her there every day um, a, an 18 month old very rambunctious toddler and then newborn coming shortly uh, and I'd, I'd been an actor so the thought that I was, wasn't going to be able to just pop out baby number three and get back on stage was crippling that that way more than the news it, it what it did to my mind what it did to my sense of self was pretty desperate and I realized I had a choice I have a choice that I can either stay in this pit of self-pity or I can find ways to really look after my state of mind so that I can if this is my new future I feel at ease and peace with it and make the best of it a bad situation and at that point I discovered the whole world of mindset and specifically neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis and it really got me challenging a lot of things I was thinking about myself and about my own capabilities and one of the things that the the guy said to me there was a couple he said well what would happen if the doctors were wrong and you could recover I hadn't even considered that I was still just locked in the narrative that my life was over what would happen if there was a way for you to be in a wheelchair and 
be known for your vo- your acting work worldwide and still be at home with the children? And the answer, as you're watching this na- now, the answer was becoming a voiceover artist and a voice actor. And actually, the the little studio space that I'm sitting in now was actually our airing cupboard. It's where all our linen was kept. And it was the only door in the house that we had space to bring the wheelchair in and I could sit and I could record. And so I threw myself into learning everything about editing, microphones, um, voice performance. And I had no idea where that journey was going to lead. And as you as you mentioned earlier, that actually led me to feeling so much better about myself, being much more positive. And it led me to actually being on the red carpets in Hollywood, winning multiple awards just within five or six years, which is kind of crazy. Wow, that that <laughs> just that few minutes there is so inspirational. Anna, I what an honor for you to tell us this story about your life and to share it with us. And you know, you you kind of already are talking about what you did with your voice and the important and actually actually it has served you very well in your life and is a very important part of your life. So beyond that, how would you define the importance of using your voice? via podcasting to serve you as an entrepreneur or business leader? And is there any kind of industry or business it would not serve to have? um, And that would probably be a child in a library, right? But other than that, um, (laughs) there's some probably not many places that it wouldn't serve you, right? So this, this for me then comes back what happened next in that story. So I've had this incredible this incredible arc of being at the depths to then being at the top of a profession. I was booked out round the clock, which is an actor is something that is like a godsend. And I had this moment of actually, actually, I think the journey's just starting. It hasn't finished because I've reached this place. Actually, what's important to me now is to tell other people that they can change their lives, their relationships, their how they see themselves, their levels of success, their levels of income, their whatever it is. And I felt very much that I, at that point, was coming into the motivational space to help people. I was, I'd, I'd trained in NLP myself and all sorts of mindset w- work. And I knew I wanted to reach the masses. And you can probably see what's coming here. I started an online business. I started trying to reach people globally. And I didn't know how to do it until one day someone said, why don't you start a podcast? Now, this was four or five years ago when a lot of people, podcasting was still not really that well known. And so I did. I I literally came into my cupboard and started a podcast. And that was it. I was a podcaster. But so what? I didn't know how to launch it. I didn't know the back end of it. I didn't know how to use it to drive traffic, how to reach more people. And so now to skip forward four years from there, I now have one of the top podcasts in the world that complement my books, that complement my coaching, and it all kind of works together. And I really see podcasting as a way that whatever it is we do in our business, whatever we're doing, what and even if you don't have a business, maybe you have something that feels much more like a mission or a purpose. Actually, what you want to do is reach as many of your ideal clients as you can to amplify that message, to really at core touch somebody's life so that they take a specific action. Now, that action could be come and work with you, but that action could also be start to change differently and be that that voice of inspiration. And I think when we see when we see that that's really what podcasting is about, it's about using your voice to elicit some change to become the catalyst. Suddenly, it's not about you and your own fears about showing up on camera or on the microphone. It is about that person that you're trying to serve. And I think every business is trying to serve some customer somehow. Absolutely. I like that phrase that you just used, um, using your voice as a catalyst for change. I think that's quite key. Yes. I think we've all had moments where we've listened to something and there's something very powerful about it, just often just being audio as well. We've all had moments where we've heard something on the radio, on a podcast, on an audio book, and we can literally, whatever we're doing, we are transported to that possibility, to unravelling something about our lives. I- I'm sure you ladies have had moments where something you've heard on a show, on a podcast, on radio, ha- and you can remember what that was and-, and what it made you think. Yeah, absolutely. And voice does have 
a, a kind of different power to move you. Um, you know, I love I love video, but I do know from days when the radio was the thing or the only option that we had back in the day, how a voice can transform your thinking, your emotions. It can impact you on a different level. Um, you know, it touches your senses in a different way. Absolutely, because you're reliant on one sense. You're not ha- you're not distracted by uh, by the visuals. You're not worrying about what someone else is doing. Very often, when we are, it it, t- it transports us to a different world when we're listening to audio, and we're not just listening to the words. Our 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 sense of sense of hearing is heightened to pick up the nuances of communication. Do I really believe what someone's saying? Are their words matching the energy that's coming through their words? We can hear when someone wobbles. We can hear the imperfections in someone's voice. And they become, it becomes a much more fleshed out relationship. It come, particularly if you're, you know, out walking your dog or you're having a shower or you're in your car. You feel very drawn into somebody's story because of the resonance of their voice. Absolutely. So as a voice actor then, um, what would you say what role do the technical aspects of setting up your podcast for success play? You know, I mean, a lot of people would say, well, can I not just jump on my phone? I mean, there's so many apps these days and yeah. you can download a podcasting app from your uh, from your phone if you wish. Um, you know, could you do that? Should you do that? Um, I think or how do comes, you set it up for success? I think it comes down to... A couple of things. One is about the status. You're, uh, if you're doing a show, if you're going to the effort of doing that, how do you want people to receive you? The kind of status and positioning of your show. When we listen to something that's poor audio quality and we are dependent on the sound to know whether we're going to stick around, if something is poor audio quality, they won't stay. And whilst on the one hand, I think it's wonderful that people can use their phone directly and record a podcast and it can be up up and out into the world within minutes. Actually, if that isn't creating a positive listening experience, then why wouldn't you and your message is important to you, why wouldn't you take steps to change? Now, I'm sitting here inside a studio booth, but sometimes I do actually record on my phone, but always with a a great quality clip on microphone that adapts my phone into a a great sound. So I don't think you need everything flashy, but you do have to understand that quality does matter. Your environment does matter. And it's actually the recording environment coupled with the microphone that is more important than anything else. Mm, That's really good. That's good advice because we get to see, Bridgetti and I both get to see very poor qualities. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to say anything negative. We're just always trying to put out the best quality that we can so that when you, when you see somebody who either didn't take the time or have it has not educated themselves or think it is as easy as just jumping on, they don't realize how um, it's like with, with the live streaming. Sometimes the camera is down here. Sometimes it's up here. Sometimes we can see straight up somebody's nose and, and that just takes away from the whole quality of it period yeah it's very distracting um so your show the entrepreneurs um get visible is the like Bergetti said it's amongst the top one percent of podcasts globally which is uh, congratulations again because that is a tremendous a tremendous um feat um what is it what differentiates a podcast from you know being average to becoming a great podcast at the level where you are there, there are several components to this, as I'm sure you can appreciate. It's what actually goes into the planning of the podcast right from the conception. So, so often someone will say, I've got, a, I've got an idea for a podcast, I'm just going to start. And actually, I would say, well, the hold your horses a little bit. It's great that you've got that energy and that enthusiasm. But have you thought about who your target audience is, what keywords they're searching for, what things they most want to know? And this has to then feed through into the title of your show, into the title of individual episodes, keywords that you're using. 
if you're doing a podcast and you really want to make it a success and be found on Google, you want to think about search engine optimization on show notes. And it's all of these components that fit together. And you want to make sure that whatever your whoever your show is for, you're actually answering things and discussing things they want to know about. So there is a little bit of background market research in the same way that you would if you were starting a business, you'd, you'd want to think, who's my ideal client? Uh, and I think it's those things together, combined with great audio, combined with a great launch. You've got to kickstart your podcast powerfully and not just not just start it and hope for the best, which is what I see so many people doing. You've got to be intentional about how you you launch the show, about how you're driving traffic to your show when you start, so that then the apps themselves, like uh, Spotify and Apple, are going to do the extra promotion and the extra legwork for you from then on. So it really is about designing it from the beginning, you know, not leaving it to chance and hoping for the best um yes absolutely so many people will say oh I, I started a podcast I had an idea I started a podcast I recorded two episodes and um I'm waiting to see how it does before I tell anyone that I've started a podcast I'm sure you know you're laughing as you see me I'm sure you know people who've done that and the truth is there is this unique window of opportunity when you first launch a show or you do a new season where Actually, you want as many people downloading it and listening and following and supporting you as possible so that you're getting maximum eyes and ears. You've got better promotion opportunities at those points than at any other time. Uh, and one of the reasons people do that is because they're scared about their own voice being out there. Even though they feel like they've got a message and they know they want to podcast, they the fear kicks in. What if I'm not good enough? What if I don't sound good enough? What if I'm just talking waffle? And that comes up time and time again with business owners, very successful experts and, and coaches that we help support inside the podcast agency. People at the top of their game, we still get them messaging us to say, are you sure it's okay? Can you just listen? Can you just, have I spoken a lot of rubbish? <laughs> does this make sense? Is it all okay? And that kind of imposter syndrome really does kick in. Uh, and that's one of the things that prevents people from really, really doing well with their own self-promotion of their podcast. Anna, you've said something quite impactful um, for me that stands out because generally a lot of people's advice is just start. And you saying, if you want to be successful, hold back. Don't just start. You need to plan a successful start. So for, for me, that was quite um quite interesting hearing that you're saying make sure that you have someone in your corner make sure that you've set up your 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 seo your keywords you know know what you're going to be talking about um be strategic about your your launch so that's something different to what i've i've not heard other people say and no wonder that you are as successful as you are because it means that you're very intentional and that kind of leads into the the next thing I wanted to ask you is how important um, is strategy when you're setting up your podcast? And can you tell us what are some of the common mistakes that you've observed? Common mistakes are obviously not telling people you've got a podcast in the first place. It's rushing to get it out of the door because you just want to have a podcast, but you haven't thought, well, what am I going to do with this podcast in three months, six months, a year? Other mistakes are not being clear on where the podcast fits into your overall business strategy and how, how are you driving traffic from the podcast into something that, that generates income. Um, it's about not being clear about who the podcast is for and what you personally want to get out of it, what you want your listeners to get out of listening to your show, because it's always got to be about them. And also about what did, what does your business want from this podcast? And I think when you're really honest about the purpose of your show from all three of those facets, then you can be much more intentional with what you put together. 
Mm. And, you know, I have the same question as Darshan, who's watching, and um, and I know a lot of people do, how do you make money? You know, we want some of your gold nuggets, your tips and your tricks and good advice. Obviously, we want that. But we also want to know, you know, how do you take and monetize your podcast? Now, obviously, it's sort of like a book. You write a book and a book is like a business card for people. But, you know, the majority of ways these days, I think, for people to be successful with selling a book is having some merch, having something extended from that that you teach or you hold a class or you provide, uh, you know, seminars and in-person events and things like that. So how would you, you know, advise us for a podcast? So the obvious one is to say you need sponsorship. But actually, on my own show, I don't choose to have sponsors. It's a very deliberate intention because I would much rather bring people into my business and sell my own products and services than send them to someone else's. So you've got to think about what's the overall strategy for my business as well. You, there, there are kind of two main ways that you can you can really get a return on investment for your podcasting. One is the relationship you develop with the listeners. So they would become your raving fans. They might go from your podcast to buy your book, into your funnel, your lead magnet, into your services. We see time and again, people almost jumping funnels because they will go straight from listening to a podcast um, binge listening to all of the episodes and then saying, well, I want to mentor with this person at the, the highest level of coaching that they give. Um, it, the other ways are a return on investment through developing relationship with your guests or if you're a, or with hosts, if you were guesting on podcasts. Very often there are joint ventures that happen, collaborations that happen as a result of that. Some people use their podcast very strategically to predominantly interview people that they'd really like to make a client and that then is accelerating or or dispensing of the need for a sales call so there are so, there are so many different ways affiliation there are things that where you can have premium level content such as um, spotify and patreon and apple now have subscription models as well but you have to go back to the core of what's my mission what's the purpose of of my business why am i really doing this and be targeted in what you're doing and don't just kind of scatter gun approach everything. You've got to know what you what was in it for you and your business, really. So so you're saying that you've got to be very strategic and know what your what your goals are, what are the outcomes that you're seeking and work backwards almost. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. And I think one of the one of the mistakes I see a lot of um, podcasters making, or even podcast guests when they go on other people's show, is that they are sending people to too many different options. They get on on one individual episode, they would be saying, you know, where where can people find out more about you? And people will reel off LinkedIn. I've got this checklist. I've got you can find me on Instagram. Um, I've got this coaching package. And actually, in truth, people is too overwhelming. People won't take any action whatsoever. So you've got to think, what's the one action I want them to take that also fits with what we've talked about on that particular episode and being really intentional about that. And it took me, you know, it took me a while to learn this. It's my second show that's really successful, not my first, because I had to work out why wasn't why wasn't I having the success? Why wasn't my previous audience growing? What was the difference? And it's the strategic intent between, behind absolutely every element of the show that has made the difference. Mm, and that's so important. I mean, all of what you're saying is really vital and very important. And, and it doesn't need to be done very sloppily because even though there are things in life you can jump in and start, and then things kind of take on a life of their own, the majority of things really need that planning, thought process, thinking it through. And, and by design is a really good word, I think, you know, to have that it all by design. Have to, that planning doesn't have to take a long time, but it does right. have to happen. Because if yeah. you just are rocking up in front of a microphone and waffling and just riffing, uh, for, well, your show is not going to be as as successful as someone who has stopped to to think actually what's the one topic my audience needs to hear right now um and making sure that that's what you cover and they know that's what you're going to cover and they feel that everything you shared they've got something valuable to take away with them it's no business i mean it's no different from starting a business right nobody just jumps into uh start you know launching a new business you don't just sort of you know the fact that you've got the 
the the office space and a desk mm -hmm. and a chair doesn't make it a good business in the same way as having a microphone um and uh, you know doesn't doesn't make you a good podcaster <laughs> yeah a absolutely bit more than just having the gadgets to uh, to become successful could you share with us your three top tips for um launching a successful podcast so i think number one is making sure that the you've tweaked everything on behind the scenes so you've got your description right your show looks great the branding is great you've got to make sure the audio quality is great and i don't just mean just the microphone i mean the music that you're using you're very intentional with what your intro is and you're using that for search engine optimization pers uh, perspective as well um and then the, the other thing is don't just hide your show. Be really proud of it from day one and launch it like you would launch any other part of your business or if you were launching a book. You wouldn't just write a book and then not tell anyone it was on Amazon. You would celebrate that fact. And so the more you can understand how to do that for a podcast, the better your initial downloads are going to be, which stands you in good stead to grow your show from there on. Mm, yes, very, very good advice. Very good advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much for all these gold nuggets. And um, we will definitely go and listen. And I'm a big fan. And I know Brigetti is a big fan. And, uh, and we will have to have you back on sometime soon. Oh, that would be lovely. Thank you. It's a pleasure yes. to be here. Thank you so much. And a thank you so much. And I want to just give a huge shout out to our audience who's joined us today um, in the comments. Big shout out to Dar Sean. He's got a podcast of his own as well. Um, so thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. Appreciate your time. And thank you for taking the time to comment. Um, and a thank you for all the golden nuggets. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to having you on the show again in future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, everyone, and stay safe. Until next time, it's goodbye from us at the Writer's Corner Live Show.